You have so many ways to sneak in here without me seeing you. <laughs> Welcome to Christ Lutheran Church. Glad to have you all here today. Uh, the first piece of business is I want to make sure you all received a copy of the phone roster. Did anybody not get a phone roster? But you got one. I wasn't giving you two until I knew I had enough. Thank you. Does anybody else need an extra copy? Sorry. No, it's my fault. There you go. Does anybody need a copy of the proposed parking lot project that we're voting on next week? Okay, again, I'm going to sound like a broken record. Make sure you try to look at it from this vantage point because the top is street side. When you do this to this, it gets very confusing. The church is at the bottom. All the work area is at the top towards the street and on the sides. At the back of it is Currington's proposal. Uh, we are going to recommend both options A, uh, which is one and two, to do the whole parking lot, but that is something you can choose. If you have questions, I would go back to the letter that you have. Ray Lefevre has become, I handed these out last week, a real good expert on this project. So give him a call. Uh, it would be better if you had some of your questions answered before next Sunday. The meeting will happen in between services. We'll take a short recess while you're here so you don't have to come back. We'll have, wait for some of the other folks to come in from the late service. And we'll decide what the Lord wants us to do with the parking lot so maybe you can get rid of your sandy shoes. You're supposed to say amen. That we consider to be phase three of Jesus Church Sanctuary, Fellowship Hall, Narthex, and now Parking Lot Project. Did you notice that there are some new signs in the paved parking area out front? Yes. Oh, some of you did see. Good. We are asking that uh, any of you who are not disabled refrain from parking in the eight paved spots up front. By code, the four center spots have always been disabled 24-7 parking. Now the two on the north and the two on the south say disabled parking for worship services only. So during the week you can park in those, but we're asking you to refrain from parking in there uh, on Sundays because we've had some issues with folks coming into the next service like Edith Holm, who some of you know, and she can't park way out in the parking lot. So. That gives us eight spots up front. We may add some more with the project, but those are the only ones that are gonna be paved. So if you're disabled, we're trying to help you out with that. Uh, most of you like the devotionals. They're in for next quarter, July, August, September. I didn't have time to hand these out to you this morning. <laughs> I'll try to remind you before you go. Once you go out the fellowship hall doors or the Narthex doors, the white table that's in the fellowship hall, there's tons of these there. So go ahead and take both if you like. It's portals of prayer and I'm still dropping stuff. One of those days. It's portals in prayer, which is from Concordia. And the other one is the word in season, which is from Augsburg. Those are the two printing companies. We are now approved by council and Florida Department of Health to be a vaccination site. Um, you should be excited about that. They have scheduled dates on Thursdays in July and August. We are the second shot site. They are combining some first shot sites into one second shot area, which is Christ Lutheran Church, because they know we're welcoming and we also have the facilities. It will be completely managed by the Florida Department of Health and Advent Health. They will let us know if they don't have enough turnout for the first shots. Marion County, keep them in your prayers. All of us in Marion, we're still at 49% vaccination for the whole county. But if they have enough turnout, then they'll actually have it. But the dates are scheduled. My thanks to Jane, who's one of our resident nurses. She'll be on site at least one of the days to help sure they all know the facility. It'll happen during office hours. So if you already had your vaccines and you want to come sit here for 15 minutes like they make you do, feel welcome, which is what I affectionately determined and called it vaccine purgatory.
Not in here. You notice the two wonderful flower arrangements. Those are in honor and memory of John Clee. John died, died a while back, but we celebrated his life Friday here, and the family wanted you to know that today, so we lift Marge and the family up in prayer. Had a wonderful celebration, and thank you for everybody who made that happen for John, who was a loving choir member and really missed his voice because the second choir is where John would be, and we are really short on people in the second choir, and Pastor Nels and Natalie Carlson, who also joined the church triumphant, were part of that choir. Hint, hint, I know you can sing and stick around for the next service. You love to hear me preaching, admit it. Yeah, you're more excited about the vaccine site, I see. It is Father's Day. Happy Father's Day to all fathers, grandfathers, great-grandfathers, fatherly people. And uh, George, if you want to put the poem up, I have a poem that Joan Knight and Sandy Wickard got for us as co-chairs of Nurture. If you'd like a copy of this, just let me know. It's not in your bulletin, but I'm going to read it uh, this morning. What is a dad? And the author is unknown. A dad is someone who wants to catch you before you fall, but instead picks you up, brushes you off, and lets you try again. A dad is someone who wants to keep you from making mistakes, but instead lets you find your own way, even though his heart breaks in silence when you get hurt. A dad is someone who holds you when you cry, scolds you when you break the rules, shines with pride when you succeed, and has faith even in you, even when you fail. To all you fathers out there, give them all a big amen. amen. And again, join your Father's Day. And I grilled yesterday, and I'm going to watch NASCAR today. That is a good Father's Day. <laughs> well, that, that, there you go. We're now going to take a quiet minute to prepare hearts and minds for worship. Notice George has been putting the hymns up there for you, uh, so you can mark your hymnal. If you would like to follow along, they are going to be presented on the monitors if you would rather view them that way. First hymn George has up there is 555 in your hymnal if you'd like to follow along. Title is Oh Sing to God Above. And again, George will have it up on the monitors if you'd rather follow there.
you to the choir a big amen. amen. Some of you are visiting with us today, and I want to remind everybody, uh, sometimes people tell me the bulletin's confusing. It's really unconfusing if you just take this part and remove it from all the inserts. This is all your liturgy for the day, which will help you not miss page three when we get that far. And we are going to begin with the apostolic greeting. The grace of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ, the love of God our Father, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all. We come together in confession. Blessed be the Holy Trinity, one God, our God of manna, our God of miracles, our God of mercy. Amen. Drawn by the Holy Spirit's power to Jesus Christ's salvation and seeking God his Father's abundance, let us confess our sin. Holy Trinity, our provider. At times, we do not share your abundance that you grant us. At times, we question your ways when they differ from the ways of your world in which we live. At times, we fail to accept your ways as righteous. At times, we turn to our own understanding rather than trusting in your wisdom. At times, we ignore your commandments and teachings in favor of our own ways. Through the power of the Holy Spirit, continue to turn us back to you, your ways and your wisdom. Continue to share with us your holy words of salvation and eternal life. And send us to care for the life of your entire creation, world, and people. Amen. Beloved people of the Holy Trinity, through Jesus Christ, our holy manna from heaven, we are fed and nourished. Through Jesus Christ, our worker of holy miracles, there is always more than enough. Through Jesus Christ, our bread of life, we are granted his salvation and eternal life. And by the Holy Spirit's power, we are sent to be Jesus' manna, miracles, and bread of life for all of God his Father's creation, world, and people. Amen. We continue with the prayer of the day, praying it together. Let us pray. All-powerful God, our Father, in your Son, Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord, you turn our death into his eternal life and victory. Through the power and strength of the Holy Spirit, continue to increase our faith and trust in Jesus so that we triumph over death, sin, and the evil one. For the sake of the same Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord. Amen. We continue praying the prayer for the world together as well. Let us pray. Let us pray for all victims of any forms of violence, terror, human trafficking, and all displaced peoples, all victims of ethnic, racial, gender, sexual, political, and religious discrimination and violence, all victims of natural disasters or human-made disasters, all victims of war, warlike activity, conflict, oppression, and strife, including in Afghanistan, Syria, and Yemen. Gracious God, our Father of healing and wholeness, through the power of the Holy Spirit, bring relief in every way you see fit for those impacted by natural disasters, human-made disasters, conflicts, persecutions, and wars. Empower all peoples to reach out to those impacted through the healing power of Jesus Christ. God, our Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, we admit our human frailties and recognize we live in a fallen creation. Restore us each and every way as you see fit, so that your will is done. In Jesus' holy name we pray. Amen. Our scripture hymn today is, Here I Am, Lord. George has it up on the board. If you like to follow along the hymnal? It's 574, 574.
You're all in good voice today. Wonderful to be singing with you. Chris Messersmith will be reading our gospel for the day. If you turn in your insert section to the second page, you will see that today's gospel had to be an insert. It was a half-page insert from St. Mark. The reason for that is the first lesson about David and Goliath is a long story. It's always fascinating to read that. But Chris will present the gospel for us today. Everybody say good morning, Chris. Good morning. morning. The gospel today is St. Mark, chapter 4, verses 35 through 41. As a preamble to it, Jesus' miracle, calming of the storm on the sea, reveals his power over nature and even evil, since the sea represents evil and chaos. The boat on the sea is a symbol of the Holy Catholic Church and us as the body of Christ, and invites us to trust Jesus amid life's turbulence. The Holy Gospel according to St. Mark, the fourth chapter. When evening had come, Jesus said to the disciples, let us go across to the other side. And leaving the crowd behind, they took Jesus with them in the boat, just as he was. Other boats were with Jesus. A great windstorm arose, and the waves beat into the boat so that the boat was already being swamped. But Jesus was in the stern, asleep on the cushion. And they woke him up and said to him, Teacher, do you not care that we are perishing? Jesus woke up and rebuked the wind and said to the sea, Peace, be still. The wind ceased and there was a dead calm. Jesus said to them, Why are you afraid? Have you still no faith? And they were filled with great awe and said to one another, Who then is this that even the wind and the sea obey him? The Gospel of the Lord. Give Chris a big amen. Amen. Let us pray. Grace Heavenly Father, thank you for gathering us here this morning. Cloudy day, but we're giving thanks for the rain that we've had. Be with the victims of the tropical storm that went through our brothers and sisters communities here in the Gulf Coast. We're grateful for all the agencies that respond immediately, many of which we support, such as Salvation Army, etc. We're grateful to be here today. We're grateful to be healthy enough to be here. Father God, through the power of the Holy Spirit, continue to open our minds, our hearts, our souls to your holy gospel, good news, and all of your scriptures. We're grateful that you continue to communicate to us through the Bible, always by the Holy Spirit's power pointing us to the redemption we receive in your Son. And yet it doesn't stop here. You send us back out into the world, empowered and gifted beyond our wildest imaginations. May we embrace that boldly, even in the turbulent times of life, as today's gospel teaches Continue to move us forward in faith as we worship and serve. And what a blessing it is to do all of these things in the holy name of the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit. It is in Christ's holy name that we pray. Amen. Amen. Great to be with you today. Great to be serving with you this morning. And you know, I always get excited about the gospel text and especially some of the first words. By the way, I want to give a shout out to somebody I meant to... um, For those of you who remember Harry Firth, this is his first time here. Harry, raise your hand back there. He's with Karen. Harry, Harry, I visited in assisted living, and he made it here. Everybody say, good morning, Harry. Harry. Carolyn's trying to find you back there. Harry, raise your hand again. And everybody say, good morning, Karen. You must be going through some turbulent times in life, so you showed up for today's Gospels. (laughs) Today's Gospel begins with these beautiful words, and you know them. When evening had come, evening came for me last night, and I tell you what, my life was boring compared to what Jesus has been doing. When evening came, those should always be the triggers. Hey, wait a minute. That means something's been going on all day long. Jesus has been up to so much that he's asleep in a boat during a raging storm and doesn't even wake up. Ooh, intrigue, when evening had come. Jesus has been teaching large crowds of people. It even says when he gets into the boat, he leaves the crowds. But that's not what he was doing last Sunday, just before evening had come. 
He's been teaching in all of chapter 4 in parables, but he narrowed down the parables for his disciples and us last week as those disciples and some of the other members of the crowd had gathered to question him. Wise thing to do to say, Lord, I don't understand. Teach me some more. It's okay to say those things. And they did. And Jesus continues to teach them about the kingdom of God and all of us. And he makes it really simple and invites us in. Wow, that's pretty excited on when evening came that day. He taught two parables last week. The first was called the sower. This sower, he says, so what should I compare the kingdom of God to? It is if a sower sows seeds in the soil. This sower does not know how that seed will sprout, but he has faith that it will. And he sees it sprout up. He also doesn't know how it will produce grain, but it does. And then that sower gets to go out and bring in the harvest. For those who have ears, listen, Jesus says. That's the imitation. We don't have to understand everything about the kingdom of God. Jesus sends us and says, so. And sometimes you'll reap the harvest. Does this building look anything like reaping of the harvest? I hope you believe that. Sow the seeds and then Jesus deepens it. And he says, well, what else should we say about the kingdom of heaven? It's as if you sow a mustard seed, the smallest of all seeds. And the Holy Spirit will build it up into a tree that has branches that even the birds of the air can nest in. Wow, that's a heck of a lot going on. On the evening of that day, invitation. We don't have to have the most gifts, the most resources. We can simply be a mustard seed and watch it sprout and watch it grow. Sometimes take part in the harvest, but know that the harvest is always happening on behalf of the Holy Spirit, on behalf of the Jesus, our Lord and Savior, on behalf of the Father. And that's incredibly exciting good news. When evening had come, that day, what a day. Wouldn't you like to have been there? Oh my heavens. Only then does Jesus say, let's go. And notice that he gathers his disciples and it says others. There's another group of people in other boats that are following Jesus. And they enter, if you look it up, the Sea of Galilee. And they start going across. Remember what's happened in the first three chapters. Today's gospel is the end of chapter four. The first three chapters have taught us what all these people are supposed to know. Jesus has faced hostility even from his own family. The religious authorities have called him the devil himself, Beezable. And in the meantime, the demons have been speaking to him and he has cured people, both the demons when they speak and when he rebukes them and won't let them speak. They've seen him conquer evil in a synagogue and for everyone who's bringing people to the home wherever he was. He has healed Peter's mother-in-law who was on her deathbed. He's healed a man with a withered hand in their sight. He's healed a paralyzed man. It's a great story. You remember the gospel where they bring a paralyzed man because they have faith in Jesus and they can't get anywhere near the house. So these guys, you've got to love them, they get up on the roof and they tear a hole in it and, <laughs> and put the guy down. That happened already and they were witnesses of those things. And they get in the boat. And what happens? This is true to St. Mark's Gospel. From start to finish, the disciples never get it. Now, with all that, I've got to tell you, if I'd been around, I might have been scared of the storm, but I'm not going to approach Jesus the way they did. You will find this same gospel story in St. Matthew and St. Luke, if you'd like to look it up in chapter 8. And the approach is reverence. The approach is near hostility today by these same ones that witnessed all of these things and even heard him teach on the evening of that day. If you look up in St. Matthew and St. Luke in chapter 8, when the storm arises in St. Matthew's gospel, they come with reverence. Save us, Lord! And they called him Lord. In St. Luke's gospel, they say, Master, Master! Reverence. Save us. What do we get today? A teaching moment. There isn't one person who will be here today or in any church 
and the body of Christ who hasn't done this to Jesus. Do you not care that we are perishing? Oh my heavens, after everything they've learned from Jesus. Don't you care? They didn't even bother to wake him up. They shouted at him. He's lucky he didn't capsize the boat and walk on water and leave him there. <laughs> I'm serious. And he doesn't address them first. Did you notice that? He addresses nature and a nature miracle. Peace be still. Can you imagine being in that boat? There is a raging storm. They are petrified they're going to die. They're yelling at Jesus and he says three words. Peace. Be still. Calm. And then he challenges them as he should when we approach him without reverence. Do you not have faith in all the things that you've seen? This is the challenge. It's the approach to Jesus and the turbulence of life. I can tell you that clergy have to deal with this all the time. Well, pastor, why did this happen to me? Well, pastor, why did this happen to the church or the world? My answer to those theologically every time is, why not you have faith? When things happen in the world that are turbulent, they're trials or they're ter terrible, why aren't you saying, I know God's in there somewhere, and God is calling me to help? Have you noticed this church does a lot of that? Have you noticed I preach that a lot? If you're complaining about poverty, we feed the poor. If you're complaining about immigration, we help food for the poor in the Caribbean so that people want to stay there. If you're complaining about how kids are being brought up, guess what? God sent us a new ministry, the Boys and Girls Club. Are you noticing something about Christ Lutheran Church? Are you noticing something about being in the boat? Are you noticing that we can also rock in the boat in faith and help others who are rocking? And we are recognized for that. That is why the Florida Department of Health has chosen us to be a possible vaccination site. Amen and hallelujah. Because we do our best to approach in reverence and say, Lord, I know you're with us. There's a floor mat in front of my TV that says this. It's like a throw rug given to me by a prisoner who's in the eternal kingdom, Carolyn Allen. When I was going through some rough and tumble times in my divorce and church issues, Carolyn said, this is perfect for you. Came into the office at our former church, St. John, which is now Hope Lutheran. I've had it there on my floor ever since, even today when I'm watching NASCAR. Yeah. And it says this, the Lord did not promise that you wouldn't have tumultuous times in life, but the Lord did promise to walk with you every step of the way, including in the perilous, turbulent times of life. And I want to give this church credit for it and believing it. There's a reason why these two plaques are up here today. Because in January of 2016, applying it to today's first verse of the gospel, when the judge's ruling came in, Jesus said to his disciples, 260 of them, including the entire staff at St. John Lutheran Church, let us go across to the other side and do so in faith. And we got in the boat. And the boat rocked, and the boat rolled. Some people got out of the boat and left, but not many. Unfortunately, many of these people died before they ever saw this, but they died in faith, seeing the vision and believing, saying, Lord, if you say so, then we are going. You just sang that. Here I am, Lord. Get in the boat, people. Enjoy the rocking and waves. Jesus is teaching us. Yes, amen, and hallelujah. This is incredible good news. And the boat stopped at a 1960s building, affectionately called Orange Blossom Hills Community Center, and two temporary offices. 2016, 17, 18, 19, 20, and 20, 20, and 21. When did you start worshiping here? Thanksgiving, 
what year? 19 or 2019. Oh, amen and hallelujah. Was it a crazy journey? Oh, you betcha. Can you see what Jesus was teaching us? Can you see? Do you want to see? And guess what? The Lord trusted us. And the ministries and missions have doubled, including at a temporary location, including here. And the Holy Spirit gifts us beyond our wildest imaginations. If any of you would have thought that there'd be enough capital to do the parking lot without asking you for a penny, guess what you're going to hear next Sunday? Oh, amen and hallelujah. Apparently, we are finally dry docked. <laughs> for now. But Jesus spoke to us through the Holy Spirit's perpetual help and guidance and said, my Christ Lutheran church, I'm guiding you to a new facility. And you first thought it was going to be on Sunset Harbor Road and 10 acres, and I said no. And then Gene and Cesar Acavone drove down this crazy 80th Avenue, and they saw five acres for sale. And I pointed you there and said, that's going to be your new harbor for your boat. And I'm going to put you in there to celebrate on a day of thanks, 2019. Have faith. Enjoy the ride. And know I'm with you. And here is the fruit of the sower parables. All of our mustard seeds of faith have become this place. And other people want to nest in the branches of the mustard tree. Oh. Oh. Who were we? We're people of faith. We're people who believe and continue to say the door's open. Why do you think the Girl Scouts joined us? Why do you think the Wednesday AA group joined us? We have members that have come back to the congregation. Amen and hallelujah. And for them, I kind of say, I'm sorry you missed the boat rock and some of that. And the learning experiences that come with it. We are deeper in faith, bolder in faith, than we were in 2016. Because we listened and we believed. Learn. If Jesus says, get in the boat, and you see that storm, say, I'm getting in. If it sinks, you'll reach out your hand or let me walk on the water. That's incredible good news. You excited? And learn in your family life, too. There isn't one person here today or in any church that hasn't had turbulent family times. Wow. The Aussie and Harriet's do not exist. I didn't like watching those shows when I was a kid. The Partridge Family. Oh my heavens, is that stupid? You can like it, but it's still stupid. In my opinion, married, married with children is actually more normal. I just watched an episode where Peg is with her mother, and her mother's in the hospital. Peg is the wife. And she calls Al, and Al didn't want to talk to her. And he's like, yeah, yeah, mom's doing much better. And his comment right back to her was, did you warn Tokyo? <laughs> and I kind of said to myself, well, the language wasn't quite like that. But yeah, if not in my house, and the guys, the six of us that I call my brothers. But one of the great things about being allowed to live long enough is to look back and somebody maybe you had turbulent times in your life, whether you're still living or not, is to grow and to not approach Jesus and say, why are they like that? Lord, help me to embrace the way they are. Keep my boundaries if necessary. But grow and learn. I had a tumultuous relationship with my father, especially when I got in my 20s. This is a picture of my dad kind of hard to see. It's the only one I have outside of a church photo. My mom gave it to me about two years before she died. That was a gift of the Holy Spirit. My dad died in 1996. What I used to do when I was in my 20s was focused on my dad's shortcomings. So I was in the boat saying, well, Jesus, look at all the shortcomings. Jesus has taught me. How much wisdom did you learn from your father? 
I can't wait to see him in heaven because we're going to share all those times. When I went to college, him and my mom were there. First time I was away, 1979. I was pistol, going to set the world on fire. Stick out your hand for me. My dad, at the door of my dorm, shook up. Give me your hand. Give him hell, Dave. I had trouble with business physics and business calculus. I'd never had trouble in school, but I remembered that handshake. I remember it even more now. I can't wait to grip his hand in heaven. When I was sitting in the bishop's office, and the bishop had a blank sheet of paper as a resignation paper on a clipboard, I swear to you, my dad said in my ear, if you sign that, I will punch you in the nose. <laughs> my dad was an attorney. I can't wait to share with him how much I've learned about the legal system. <laughs> I can't wait to tell my dad, you were never at the Fifth District Court of Appeals, but your son was. <laughs> I can't wait to talk to my dad about how I call myself with no authority the MD, JD, theology because I know enough about the legal system now by the grace of God to help many of you. And in your rocky times with your health, has there any, been any medical advice you ever got from me? <laughs> Am I right more than I'm wrong? Because I've listened to the Holy Spirit saying, I've called you my child to be with them in that rocking boat. And if not, give them the answer, point them to the right medicine, the right doctor. And I take great joy in that. Not for me, for the Lord. A lot of that came from my pop. Happy Father's Day. When you see me dance and get really fired up, blame my mom, not my dad. <laughs> but my dad would be proud, and I know he is. Son, he never saw me go to seminary. But he knows. And son, I'm grateful that your mother and I paid for your education at Indiana University of Pennsylvania and Florida State, because look how the Lord has used that to pay off your business background in a church setting. Amen. <laughs> Hallelujah. Those things were important to my mom and my dad. That's exciting. That's learning. That's looking back with wisdom, not judgment, and not being ever a minute of not excited to know when my day comes and the Lord takes me home, dad's going to be there with a big smile and that handshake. And mom's going to say, I appreciate the fact you always had your shoes signed. That was important to my mom. <laughs> and then she'll say, I didn't appreciate the dancing so much. <laughs> you know, one thing in the turbulence of life, it's not really turbulence, you can look at it that way. As I've had people come to me and friends, particularly friends, and you know, all my buddies that I still go to the Outer Banks with and do all the things, high school, I've known some of them since elementary school, in fact, all of them, uh, towards at least by sixth grade. They all have families. They all have kids. I've never reflected and said, Lord, why don't I have a wife and a family? And he said, you tried that once. <laughs> Didn't work so well. Don't you think Jesus has a sense of humor? Don't you think Jesus has a sense of humor? I've never complained to Jesus about that. All my buddies' kids call me Uncle Dave. Every one of them. And there's at least 12 to 20. I can't ever keep track. I've been invited to preside at a wedding for the oldest of all of them. And I still remember Eric saying, Uncle Dave, would you preside at my wedding? First he said, would you marry me and his spouse? And I said, I'm in enough trouble, I cannot do that. <laughs> and he said, what do you mean? I said, I preside, the Lord does the marrying. You're marrying your spouse, not the clergy person. <laughs> Words count, folks. All of you stopping saying holy cow out there, right? And the Lord has always told me, you've had lots of children. And I know. When I wasn't working in the 80s, I started to support and save the children because I wanted to do something positive. This just happens to be one of them. I've had at least 20 kids. Did you know I have 20? 
legitimate kids. Look at the smile on this gal from the Philippines. Her name's Manera. This is an older picture. She was 12 here. Even when I didn't have an income, I was supporting them. I have two girls. This particular gal wants to grow up to be a teacher. Again, I believe she's 14 or 15 now. I've always had a family. The other one, Kira, is in Nepal, and she wants to be a doctor. The only way these kids would ever make it is if they're in Save the Children, because by now both of them would have been married and out of school. Both of them are going to make it. Every kid I've ever supported in Save the Children uh, in faraway lands has made it. I just got a letter from Monera. I had checked on both of them. I haven't heard from Kira yet about the pandemic, and things are slowed down. I just got this. This is written to me as if she's my daughter. Dear David, nothing happened, but grateful because you are not getting tired of writing me. I have a huge family. There's no marrying in heaven. We're all brothers and sisters in Christ. In this life and the next, you are my family, and I am the crazy son of all of you. And you're not allowed to divest me. Actually, you are. Embrace the boat. The disciples blew it today. Every time of turbulence in your life, say, Lord, here I am. Take the helm. You are my captain. And wherever this is going, something positive is going to come out of it, even though I can't see anything but the storm right now. And Jesus smiles. He says, now you got it. Because I'm your good shepherd. And at some point in that turbulence, I'm going to say, peace, be still. And it will be over. And you and I will still be standing together. And your faith will be deepened tenfold, thirtyfold, even a hundredfold because you approached me with reverence and you believed. Thanks be to God. Amen. You'll find your communion liturgy in your worship folder. Begins on page three and continues on page four. If you'd like to follow along, as I'm getting the table ready, I can see one of the things my dad's saying to me, NASCAR, really? If Pocono was today, I'd tell him. Holy, mighty, and merciful Lord, heaven and earth are full of your glory and great love you sent to us, Jesus, your Son, who reached out to heal the sick and suffering and preached good news to the poor, and who on the cross opened his arms to all. In the night in which he was betrayed, our Lord Jesus took bread. He gave thanks, and he broke it, and he gave it to his disciples, saying, Take and eat. This is my body. It is given for you. Do this for the remembrance of me. Again, after supper, our Lord Jesus took the cup. After giving thanks, he gave it to all to drink, saying, This cup is the new covenant in my blood, shed for you and for all people for the forgiveness of sin. Do this for the remembrance of me. Remembering, therefore, his death, resurrection, and ascension, we await his coming in glory. Pour out the Holy Spirit, that by this holy communion we may know the unity we share with all your people in the body of your Son, Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord. Through him, with him, in him, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours, Almighty Father, now and forever. Amen. Lord, remember us in your kingdom and teach us to pray as we will sing the Lord's Prayer.
Come to the banquet, for all is now ready. Thanks be to God. One need communion at their seat. Okay. May the body and blood of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ continue to strengthen us and keep us in his grace and the power of the healing Holy Spirit, now and forever. Amen. Amen. On the back side of your worship folder, which is page 4, you'll see the blessing which we pray together. Let us pray. Blessed be the name of the Lord. The Lord is worthy to be praised and adored. 
So we lift up holy hands in one accord, singing, Blessed be the name, blessed be the name, blessed be the name of the Lord. Amen. Our sending, processing out into the Lord's ministry and mission fields. Hymn is You Are Mine, 581, 581. If you like to follow along in hymnal. Continue to bring Christ to all people today and every day, planting those seeds even in the turbulent times of life, knowing that the Lord always says to us in those turbulent times, I am with you, peace be still, and let's go for the tumultuous ride. It's going to make you learn and grow. And isn't that what God's all about? Some of the mystery in the kingdom of God. Yep. Go in peace, share the good news of Christ crucified and risen, and get your portals of prayer and the word in season. And desserts from John Clee, who was diabetic, who is diabetic no more. Lots of homemade desserts. We will. <laughs> and we thank thanks to God. Amen. Have a great week.